I'm Lerato Matlala and this is the 6th edition of Creatives Under Lockdown where we focus on issues affecting artists. He has starred along some of Hollywood's best artists including Jill Scott and locally he was one of the cast members in the historic movie Kalushi. This week I'm in conversation with one of SA's talented actors Tabo Malema. Tabo, you have a very impressive body of work, having been part of productions both locally and internationally. But of all the characters you have played thus far, which did you find the most challenging? The one role that stands out, which was uh, highly challenging, was um, when I played the role of Jojo in the movie Primeval Kill. It was my first Hollywood appearance. I was still very young, intimidated by the scale and magnitude of the set, the level of professionalism, the big stars, you know, that I grew up watching. Now I was standing alongside them. So settling in and finding my footing and my place and really doing the character justice uh, came after some time. And uh, fortunately, it was like a three-month shoot. So gradually, I found my footing. But it was extremely challenging as it was my debut on a big Hollywood feature film set. There was a lot of excitement around the movie Kalushi. I mean, it tells a very significant story about our history. But being part of the cast must have come with some pressure. It was a blessing to, to play the role of Mondi Mutlung in Kalushi. It's a very historic piece. I believe it is timeless and uh, even future generations will still refer to the movie to just throw some sort of historic teachings, politically so, during that time. He was a loose cannon Mondi. And I enjoyed playing someone who was actually out of my comfort zone. He was quite militant. He was doer before thinking and uh, he was generally aggressive through and through. So. It was nice being thrown into the deep end of such a role as it was not something that I was accustomed to playing. So I think it was also concerning that I was forever second guessing myself because I felt that, you know, having played a real life character, how best can one be authentic? So it was tough, but um, I believe one did the best with the part and the information. There was a lot of pre-prod research sessions, among other things. The director was great, Mandla Tube. Yeah, it was amazing. Having worked both locally and internationally, what would you say are the differences and similarities between the industries? The local industry, I believe, has not obviously been around as long as Hollywood and, and other film industries outside of Africa have been. So it's still early stages for industry, but I believe that it's growing at a very venomous pace. There's quite a number of great shows now we have on our channels, on our screens. But obviously one of the factors that differentiates the two is that international productions generally tend to have insane budgets, whereby locally budgets are limited. And uh, there's also some kind of like politics that go into getting the role, auditioning, being a part of a production. And uh, it kind of like sometimes demotivates one. But I feel that locally we're starting to grow gradually. We just need to be wary of not looking more towards celebrity to be actors. Rather, let's look at trained actors and turn maybe them into popular people. Your versatility is something that some artists really struggle to achieve or are not even lucky to get the opportunities to achieve. You have played different roles in theatre, television and film. How are you able to adapt to these different platforms? The similarity that is common is... um emotional expression in all three categories. So I went to a film school post metric where I did quite a lot of theater in terms of my introductory course and uh, gradually one moved into camera as well but I also kind of like recommend theater to be I think the basis of one's foundation because from there you learn to to do things lesser for TV and for film. So on stage obviously one is larger than life and uh, we kind of like over exaggerate so that we can convey the message and the audience can actually receive the message that is intended and not the one that is miscommunicated. And then when it comes to TV and film, it's all about toning down. That's why there's a saying that less is more on screen because the distinction is quite a thin line, but uh, it's an art that one acquires over years of experience to get it right. 
The lockdown to keep the spread of the coronavirus has negatively affected different sectors in the economy, of course, including the entertainment industry. How has it directly affected you? COVID-19 impacted my life negatively in the sense that um, production got shut down that I'm working on and um, as a result one had to stay home and my line of work you don't get paid unless you work so I found it to be very challenging and um, it was frustrating financially debts mounted responsibilities I could not live up to and the promises I made we just saw the industry at last just shutting down and no activity happening whatsoever so as an artist it cheated me out of my daily bread this month, we are commemorating the youth of 1976 who fought against the apartheid education system. What is the current youth fighting against? I believe the youth today is challenged with um, having to deal with elements such as self-belief, having confidence, because you look at social media, a lot of stuff there is artificial. We are now faced with financial struggles beyond freedom and other things and young people are finding themselves to be more and more frustrated not knowing what their place is in society so i think the new enemy now is social ills that affect all communities um, that being unemployment abuse of drugs substances lack of opportunities for certain people and also the art of respecting money. That's one thing I believe can lead to black excellence and accumulation of wealth. And with regards to the entertainment struggle, I feel that uh, as freelancers, we are not deemed to be essential to begin with. So um, a lack of stability in terms of generating income. You're working now, then the next day you're not working. In between jobs, how do you survive? So knowing how to stretch your salary is very important so that when rainy days come, they don't really make you ultra completely wet. <laughs> so Tabo, let's get to know you better. Just tell me a little bit about where you grew up and some of your fondest childhood memories. Grew up in Pretoria in a small township called Mabobani next to Sushanguve. I'm from a loving family, supportive, yet with a strict father. And one of my fondest memories was when I was at Crash and I performed in one of the plays that we did. And I think it's actually one of the early signifiers of what an entertainer one would become later in life, even though I did not know much then. But I was amazing in it and uh, I enjoyed myself and the audience went ballistic. So what do you do for fun? For fun, I love spending time with family. I love sports, in particular soccer. I love reading and a bit of some particular dancing here and there. Gambu dancing as well. I love physically orientated activities. As for music, I'm an 80s baby, so Kwaito is still in my top one and then followed by other genres. But I'm open to any type of music as long as I feel that it, it hits home. It touches one in one form or another. You have achieved so much in your life thus far. I mean, your profile must be the envy of many artists. But what else is still in the bucket list? I feel my journey is still at an infant stage and uh, among some of the main things that I'd like to achieve is to win an Oscar for Best Actor in any genre of a film. My dream is to become a global icon and that is being influential, making moves beyond the borders of one's native land. So an Oscar or two is what I still want and believe I will achieve. So finally, what is your message to a young Tabo who wants to be an actor when he grows up? There's a new war out there that young people are fighting and uh, one of the dangers is using social media as a measuring stick to what is real and what is not. There is a lot of artificial displays on social platforms and people perceive that to be true. Unfortunately, more than not, it actually isn't. So the perception that people who would like to come into the entertainment industry have is quite, I think, off the mark as compared to what actually happens on the ground. Like in reality, people need to do away with fallacies, impressions, artificial living, and instant success and gratification. I don't find that to be 
encouraging and positively building. I also suggest that people are accustomed to reading. It exercises the mind, it keeps you fresh, and knowledge is not just power, but the application of that knowledge. I'm currently reading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and uh, The Power of Self-Discipline, No Excuses by Brian Tracy. I'm inspired to read books that change one's lifestyle through changing one's mindset, looking to how to better one's financial living because the profession that I'm in has no consistency and it's not sustainable on its own. Multiple revenue streams are very crucial and I think it's when one achieves financial success that you can buy back time and actually do that which you truly want to do and love. For the next edition of Creatives Under Lockdown, you can visit sabcnews.com or at SABC News on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. For SABC Digital News, I'm Lerato Matala.